Hi, third graders. We're going to continue today reading another chapter of The Year of Miss Agnes. And your job today is to focus on how a character affects the sequence or the order of what happens in the story. And you're also going to learn a little bit about how it affects someone's character, or how it reveals information about their character. So we're going to read one chapter. We're going to look at a chart together. And then you have a Google slide assignment to work on today. Um, I think you'll enjoy the very last slide. It's got a little bit of exploring for you to do. So chapter seven, or excuse me, chapter eight. The next day, I forgot my lunch and Boko brought it to me. She knocked on the door and then stepped in looking frightened. She put the lunch on my desk and started out the door. Miss Agnes looked very surprised. She put her hand on Boko's shoulder. Boko looked at the floor. Where did you come from? She asked Boko. When Boko didn't answer, Miss Agnes looked at me. She's deaf, I said. She can't hear you and she can't talk. Deaf, said Miss Agnes, still surprised. Why hasn't she been coming to school? The others looked at Miss Agnes as if she were crazy. She can't learn nothing. She's deaf, said Charlie Boy. Nonsense, said Miss Agnes. Why hasn't she been sent out to a school for the deaf? Is she related to you? She asked me. She's my sister, I said. How old is she? She's 12, like me, said Toby Joe. Do you both live with your mother? Yes, I said. Does your mother know about schools for the deaf? Yes, I said. Grandpa made her bring Boko to this school the first year the school opened. That teacher said she didn't know how to teach kid, deaf kids and Boko had to go to a special school. Mama got mad. She said Boko don't need no school. She said it's bum to go so far away. Boko's learning to cook and she can sew pretty good. Everyone was feeling pretty nervous now because Miss Agnes was not happy about Boko. She must come to school from now on, said Miss Agnes. I'll speak to your mother. She took Boko by the hand. The rest of you finish your lunch. I'm going to have a little talk with Boko. She put her arm around Boko and pointed to her. You, she said. Boko understood that. Then Miss Agnes looked at me. Boko, what kind of a name is that? I don't know. That's just what grandma started to call her when she was little. Some kind of Indian name, I think. Well, does she have another name? I don't think so, I said. How do you spell it? I don't know. I never saw anyone spell it. Well, I never, said Miss Agnes. We never saw her surprised yet, but Boko sure did it. She started to write Boko's name on a piece of paper. You, she said. She pointed to Boko and then to her name written on the paper. Then she put the pencil in Boko's hand and held her hand so that Boko wrote her name too. You are Boko. She, she did it again and again so that Boko would know. And then she took a piece of that tape and wrote Boko's name on the empty desk. Boko pinched her lips together and looked at all of us. We looked at each other. Miss Agnes was going to teach Boko. I don't know what Miss Agnes said to Mama, but Boko did come to school. Not the very next day, because Mama was kicking up a big fuss about Boko having no clothes and her socks having holes in them, but the day after. Mama had a big fight with Grandpa about it. She said who was going to help her at home if me and Boko were in school, and what good would school do if do Boko if she couldn't hear anything anyway? And she wished there was never a school here and that skinny white woman was too nosy. But Grandpa told Mama to delek, be quiet. And he told her he always knew there was a way for Boko to learn. And that the skinny white woman was a good woman who would help out our Boko. When Mama stomped out the door, Grandpa lit his old pipe, and then he pointed it at me and said, real crabby, your Mama had a hard life, you know? It's hard to have a baby born deaf, and then your daddy got sick and went away and died. A hard luck person like that could get kind of mean. You got to think about that. Like I was the one who yelled at her, 
and not him. When Sam White flew in with the mail that afternoon, Miss Agnes had a long talk with him at the store, and the next time Sam came in with the mail, there were special books for Boko, sign language, a way Boko could learn to talk with her hands. This sign language is really something. Miss Agnes said when people have been doing it a long time, their hands just fly. I'd like to see that. And that's not all deaf people can learn to do. Miss Agnes said, there's a way deaf people can learn to look at your mouth when you're talking and know what you're saying that way. She said they would teach that to Boko in the special school for the deaf if she went. We all got tickled with that idea and started talking to each other without making a sound. Only we made our mouths really stick out when we did it. It was so funny. Charlie boy fell off his chair laughing. Then Roger started saying bad words in Indian with his mouth and everyone started giggling. Then Miss Agnes told us about a way that blind people can read. They, we were pretty interested in that because of old blind Simon. He's been blind for a long time because he got whipped across the eyes with a willow branch when he was out trapping. That's what he told us. I bet he would like to know about this blind reading. We all practiced making bumps on our paper by pushing a pin through and then trying to see if we could tell how many bumps there were when we had our eyes closed. That was really hard. Roger had scars all over his hands and fingers from that time he burned himself, putting gas in the stove to start a fire. So Roger said he couldn't feel a single bump with his fingers. Agnes said he'd better take very good care of his eyes then. Roger looked pretty serious about that. Here, we used to think some things were so bad, you just had to give in to them, like being deaf or blind. But now we were finding out that there's always something they've thought of to help people like that. It was hard to do, the sign language and blind reading, but it's better to kick some instead of just sinking. While we were doing our morning work, the writing and the arithmetic, Miss Agnes would work with Boko. Together they learned the alphabet. You do this alphabet with one hand because if you use two hands, then deaf people can't talk if they're holding something. Miss Agnes would show Boko the picture of the letter in the book and then Boko would make the sign and then Miss Agnes would have her write, her, write the letter on paper, the little letter and the big one. And Miss Agnes would say the letter and Boko would make her mouth go the way Miss Agnes did. We all learned the sign language alphabet. We couldn't help but watch them. Boko learned it faster than Miss Agnes and Charlie Boy learned it faster than anybody. Goodness, Miss Agnes would say in a disgusted way. I wish I had a six-year-old brain. Charlie Boy could do all kinds of things like that, really. He was only six, but when we played ball games, he would be the best thrower and the best catcher. He could run faster than anyone and he could climb up to the top of the tree like a squirrel and do all these somersaults and cartwheels. He wasn't any good at school stuff, really. He wasn't really good at anything you sat still for, but he was the best at sign language. Miss Agnes watched him and said, I think sign language is as much an athletic skill as a language. She meant if you're good at stuff like Charlie Boy, you do the sign language easier. Soon, Boko could ask all of us to tell her our name, and we would do it in sign language, and then we'd ask her her name, and she'd sign it for us. Boko was so happy, knowing everyone's real name. Boko had made up names for all of us in the village, but only I knew what they meant. Like old man Anderson, he had such a big belly that Boko would curve her hand above her stomach for his name. And for Mama, she'd pretend to make a bow of the apron strings Mama always tied around her front, and I knew who that meant. And then Miss Agnes said it was too long to spell up everyone's name and signs, so we just used initials. I was Fred, so she told Boko to make the little F sign over her heart to show I was her sister. After Mama wasn't acting so crabby about Boko coming to school, Boko went home one day and tapped Mama on the arm to make her pay attention. Then she made the sign for Mama, her thumb under her chin. That means Mama, I said. 
Then Boko smiled, that smile she got from our daddy, and she made the sign for pretty. That means you are pretty, Mama, I said. Mama's face went so stiff for a minute that I felt nervous. And then she ducked her head away and went on with her sewing. You girls act so foolish, she said in a sort of funny voice, not looking at us. The next day, Mama wrapped up a loaf of her good bread in a towel and told us to take it to school for Miss Agnes. We were so surprised, we just stared at her for a minute. Mama frowned at us as mean as she could. That teacher don't look like she eats nothing, she said. Like it was our fault Miss Agnes was so skinny. That's how we knew. Mama wasn't mad at Miss Agnes anymore. So Mama's starting to see, right, that the things Miss Agnes is teaching are really important. Let's take a look at how the events of this chapter affect what happens in the story, right? How these characters affect. So here we are, the characters were Miss Agnes, we saw Boko here and the other students and they were all in the classroom, right? So we're gonna look at four events that happen in this chapter, okay? And remember, we're talking about how characters affect what happens in the story. So what their actions are, what they say, what they do, Let's take a look at this first event. Boko comes to school and Miss Agnes speaks to her, right? She pays attention to her, asks her some questions. Right? Miss Agnes discovers, right, that she's deaf and that she's not going to school and she needs to be learning too. So Miss Agnes orders special books for Boko and you'll know in the story, you notice Sam White delivered them when they came when he came to deliver mail, right? So first this happened, next this happened. Then Miss Agnes used those books and she taught Boko some sign language along with everybody else, right? They all picked up that information as well because they were so intrigued, they kept watching. And then last, right, the whole class learns that sign language because they were watching what was happening, right? So because Miss Agnes chose to do this one thing all of these other things happened. This is the order of what happened in that chapter because of the one thing Miss Agnes did. I want you to be thinking about the things that happened in this chapter. What do they tell you about the characters? What do they reveal about them, right? About Boko, about Miss Agnes. Think about Miss Agnes's conversation with Mama, right? To get her to come to school. You've got a job in Google Slides to answer a few questions and then to do some exploring. I hope you enjoy it today.